The race is heating up. Hello, everyone. My name is Vuyo Mvogo. Tonight, exclusive data from one of the country's top research firms. The latest figures suggest the Democratic Alliance could have a problem. And in some ways, that problem starts at the top. We'll interrogate the numbers. But first, let's meet the team. Political analyst and author R.W. Johnson. Also with us, Gareth Van Onselen, who is the head of governance at the Institute of Race Relations. Good evening to both of you, gentlemen. Thanks very much uh, for joining us. If I may start uh, with uh, you, Bill Johnson, as someone who was integrally involved um, in this uh, research very briefly the methodology but perhaps also the demographics um, of this research well it's a completely representative national survey three and a half thousand people across the country uh, complemented by focus groups in all the major cities and uh, it was done in the second half of february and first part of march well, let's look at uh, whether South Africans have confidence uh, in, their, in the leaders of their respective political parties. Here we've got uh, the ANC at 72.2%, which is quite a high score for Cyril Ramaphosa. Uh, the Democratic Alliance, 56.1%. Um, the EFF also at 56, above 56, 56.4 to be exact. Let's look at those who do not um, have confidence in the party leaders. And those are the numbers, 9.5, 8.9, and uh, 6.1. Uh, Bill Johnson, not surprising, isn't it? Uh, well, we knew that Ramaphosa was, and he shows up right throughout the survey, as far more popular than the other leaders. But it's important to say of this question, we asked people that question before we asked them which party they supported. So they were able to answer without anyone knowing who they were particularly referring to, which I, I think helps accuracy. Um, it's very striking that Maimani has come back a long way. Uh, there was a period in 1617 when he was the most popular leader in the country because Zuma was right down in the end at 22 percent and uh, he was quite a long way up. Now since then he's come back a long way and particularly since Ramaphosa took over and the problem really is that the DA was hooked on being anti-Zuma and it hasn't been able to make the transition sufficiently to the new situation they face with Do Robert Fonzo as leader. Uh, thoughts, Gary? Yes, I, th I think those trends are accurate, and um, they're the same kind of patterns we've seen in the polls that the, the IRR has conducted. Uh, Maimani definitely has a, a confidence and a favorability problem amongst his own constituents, amongst DA voters, which is what that poll shows. Uh, and in fact, I think it's more pronounced in some places than others. So in Gauteng in particular, I think he has a real problem. Uh, and his favorability or the confidence levels in him amongst DA voters in that province are particularly low. <laughs> and uh, I agree with Bill. It's a consequence of a whole range of things, of, of putting all um, the sort of DA eggs in the Zuma basket uh, and of a failure to provide a kind of compelling vision and purpose behind which the party's core base can get. Uh, if anything, he sort of instilled a kind of lack of confidence and uncertainty and ambiguity into the DA, and it's played out in how he's perceived amongst DA voters. Let's go to the future then. Right, well that I think is a key question. This is, uh, how do you think the period ahead will be for you and your family? And uh, as you can see, the ANC are very much more optimistic than the others. The DA voters, the blue uh, uh, bar is the lowest. And Why is that though? Is it because um, they have accepted perhaps a reality that a Musi Maimane will not be? No, I don't think it was to do with that. I think in the focus groups we found morale was very low everywhere, lowest of all among Asians, which is a part of the DA constituency. And, but not good, I may say, even among Africans. We found nostalgia for white rule, people saying, what a pity we can't have the whites in charge again. And in 2017, we found nostalgia for the homelands. 
Uh, so people looking back and, you know, now that's a sign of very low morale, low confidence and, and so on. But nonetheless, the, the mood of the ANC is much better and this is going to be reflected in better turnout. Gareth? Yes, well, um, look, there are a number of different ways of, of testing this kind of thing. I mean, this is a good question to, um, as Bill says, sort of test the kind of electoral mood out there, whether people are unhappy or sad or optimistic or pessimistic. There's a great deal of evidence to show that these kind of attitudes, and however you frame this question, is the party, sorry, is the country going in the right direction or the wrong direction? Do you have confidence in the future? The long-term trends in South Africa over the last 15 years have been devastating. I mean, that graph has dropped all the way down uh, if you follow a company like Ipsos into the low 30s. Uh, in other words, only about 30% of people think the country is moving in the right direction. And this is absolutely in line with that. I think there is a generally repressed, unhappy um, atmosphere out there, and people are not overly optimistic about the way in which it's headed. And I'm looking at the, the DA supporters in particular, when yes, it comes well, to feeling that uh, things will get worse. Yes, I think that's a trend that's, that's fairly typical of opposition parties. I mean, you'll see the EFF is also obviously higher than the ANC. They are obviously not happy with m much more than just the direction of the country as an abstract thing. They're not happy with the ANC per se and its leadership. And that kind of manifests in them being the most, you know, pessimistic and unhappy because they don't see any faith in the party that's governing because it's not them. Okay. Now, still ahead uh, on the race, the next step for the Democratic Alliance. Has the party reached a crossroads? We'll get some answers in a moment. Don't go away.